The Caribbean waters still bear silent witness to Ship 33's fiery demise, but SpaceX isn't slowing down. Flight 8 is primed and ready. Will this mission finally complete what Flight 7 couldn't? The million-dollar question remains. Are we just one flight away from witnessing history's first-ever Starship catch attempt? Welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours. Today we're dissecting SpaceX's latest revelations about Starship's next giant leap forward. Booster 15 and Ship 34 stand ready at Starbase. After January's partial success, where we saw an incredible booster catch but lost Ship 33 in spectacular fashion over the Caribbean, SpaceX has identified the exact failure point. They've completely redesigned critical systems based on what they've learned, and Monday, March 3rd is now officially launch day. But that's not all. Strange activities at the launch site suggest the team is still wrestling with hot staging ring issues. What's really happening behind the scenes? And what modifications has SpaceX made to prevent another mid-flight disassembly? Plus, we'll reveal the ambitious plans for Flight 9 that could happen as soon as April. Let's dive right in. So what exactly happened with Flight 7? While we all celebrated the booster's perfect landing in Mechazilla's arms, Ship 33 met a different fate. SpaceX has now revealed the full story, and it's fascinating. The mission started beautifully on January 16th. Booster 14 thundered off the pad with all 33 Raptor engines roaring in perfect symphony. After stage separation, it performed that jaw-dropping ballet of precision, executing a flawless boostback maneuver and sticking the landing between Mechazilla's chopsticks. There was one small hiccup, a single Raptor engine on the middle ring failed to relight during boost back due to a low power condition in the igniter system. But here's the beauty of SpaceX's engineering. Redundancy. The remaining engines compensated flawlessly, bringing the massive booster home safely. SpaceX has already created an igniter upgrade for upcoming flights to prevent this issue from happening again. Ship 33's story, however, took a dramatic turn Approximately two minutes after its six Raptor engines ignited, cameras caught a sudden flash near one of the vacuum engines. This was the beginning of the end. Telemetry data showed an alarming pressure spike in the attic section, the area above the engines where critical plumbing and electronics live. What followed was a cascading failure as sustained fires spread through this vulnerable area, eventually forcing five of the six engines to shut down. The ship struggled on, but after losing communication with ground control, SpaceX's flight termination system activated automatically. The Caribbean waters became Ship 33's final resting place, but not before giving us a spectacular light show as it broke apart, exactly as the flight termination system was designed to do. The post-flight investigation revealed something groundbreaking. The culprit? Harmonic vibrations in the propulsion system oscillations that were far more intense than anything SpaceX had observed during ground testing. These vibrations created leaks that overwhelmed the attic's venting capacity, allowing flames to spread uncontrollably. This discovery explains why Ship 34 underwent that unusually long static fire test at Massey's launch pad. SpaceX engineers were methodically pushing the Raptor vacuum engines to their limits, testing multiple thrust levels and three different hardware configurations in the vacuum engine feed lines. Their goal was simple but critical. Recreate those destructive harmonic vibrations in a controlled environment. The results from these tests have directly shaped Flight 8's design. SpaceX has made three crucial modifications. Completely redesigned fuel feed lines, refined propellant temperature settings, and established new operating thrust targets that should prevent the harmonic resonance that doomed Ship 33. But they didn't stop there. The attic section, that Achilles heel of Ship 33 has been completely reimagined. Engineers have added additional venting ports and implemented a new nitrogen purge system to immediately displace any leaking propellant before it can ignite. Looking to the future, the transition to Raptor 3 engines will dramatically reduce the attic volume altogether and eliminate many of the joints that allowed leaks to form in the first place. This is why space exploration is so exhilarating. Each setback becomes the foundation for the next breakthrough. Flight testing remains the fastest path to perfection, and Flight 8 stands on the shoulders of Flight 7's valuable lessons. Speaking of Flight 8, 
Booster 15 and Ship 34 are almost ready for their moment in the spotlight. Ship 34 features an improved heat shield with new thermal protection methods, and if all goes according to plan, it will deploy four dummy Starlink satellites using its upgraded PS dispenser, a key test of Starship's payload deployment capabilities. Meanwhile, Booster 15 will once again attempt the crowd-pleasing launch, boost back, and tower catch with Mechazilla that had us all cheering during Flight 7. The mission will follow a similar trajectory, with Ship 34 heading for a controlled splashdown in the Indian Ocean. No recovery attempt is planned for the ship this time, but remote camera boys are stationed in the splashdown zone to capture every moment of its descent. There's been some drama with Booster 15's preparations, particularly concerning its hot staging ring, the critical component that enables Starship's unique stage separation sequence. Initially, SpaceX chose not to install this ring at the production facility, instead transporting it separately to the launch site. While it was installed on Tuesday afternoon, mysteriously, crews removed it again on Wednesday night. These unusual maneuvers suggest engineers discovered issues that needed immediate attention. These challenges led to SpaceX's official announcement on Thursday, now targeting to launch Starship's eighth flight test as soon as Monday, March 3rd. This slight delay gives the team time to ensure everything is perfect. One of the most intriguing aspects of Flight 8 is the deliberate heat shield testing strategy. Similar to Flight 7, SpaceX has intentionally removed select heat shield tiles from Ship 34. This isn't a manufacturing error. It's a calculated experiment to gather crucial data on how Starship's thermal protection system handles the extreme forces of re-entry. Ship 34 will also test actively cooled tiles, a revolutionary approach to thermal protection that was attempted on Flight 7, but never delivered data due to the ship's premature demise. This technology could be game-changing for Starship's reusability and might even influence future spacecraft design across the industry. While all eyes are on Flight 8, Construction at Pad B continues at breakneck speed. Massive tanks are being installed nightly atop the newly covered commodities trench, transforming from what was recently a muddy construction site into a state-of-the-art launch facility. The flame trench is evolving rapidly with concrete replacing mud and the first elements of the steel structure that will support the quick disconnect adapters are now being raised. The new Mechazilla at Tower B appears nearly ready for testing potentially operational for a catch maneuver within weeks. Looking beyond Flight 8, Starship Flight 9 is already generating excitement, expected as early as April according to FCC applications. This mission could mark a historic milestone, the first ever attempt to catch a returning Starship using Mechazilla's chopsticks. We've already witnessed two successful booster catches, but snagging a Starship presents a far greater challenge. The vehicle must survive the inferno of re-entry execute a precise deceleration, perform its signature belly flop maneuver, and position itself perfectly between the chopsticks. A dance of physics that would make even the most seasoned aerospace engineers nervous. The choice of booster for Flight 9 will be telling. After Booster 15's mission, SpaceX has limited options, either Booster 16, which is still in development, or potentially reflying Booster 14 from Flight 7 which would mark the first ever reuse of a super heavy booster. Ship 35 is currently slated as the next vessel to venture into the heavens. But as we've learned with SpaceX, plans can change rapidly. Meanwhile, beyond our immediate orbital neighborhood, breathtaking discoveries continue to reshape our understanding of the cosmos. The Very Large Telescope has just achieved something remarkable, detecting atmospheric winds on the exoplanet Tylos. This ultra-hot Jupiter orbits its star in a blistering 2.7 days, with surface temperatures exceeding 3,200 degrees Celsius, 5,800 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to vaporize most metals. Despite these extreme conditions, scientists using the VLT's Espresso Spectrograph identified elements like titanium and vanadium in high-altitude clouds. This technique, called high-resolution transmission spectroscopy, analyzes starlight as it filters through an exoplanet's atmosphere during transit. While today it's being used on extreme worlds like Tylos, tomorrow's telescopes will apply these methods to Earth-like planets, potentially revealing signs of habitability or even life. Back on Earth, Australia is preparing for a historic milestone in its space program. 
Gilmore Space Technologies has announced a launch window between March 20th and March 31st for the inaugural orbital flight of its Eris rocket. Launching from the Bowen Orbital Spaceport in Queensland, this mission could mark Australia's first domestically developed orbital rocket launch, a significant achievement for the country's emerging space industry. Eris sets itself apart with an innovative hybrid propulsion system combining solid fuel with liquid oxidizer, offering a more environmentally friendly alternative to conventional rocket engines. After years of development and numerous static fire tests, Gilmore Space is ready to prove its technology in the ultimate test, reaching orbit. Success would establish the Bowen Spaceport as a viable commercial launch site and bolster Australia's growing presence in the global space economy. In lunar exploration news, NASA and Intuitive Machines are preparing to send a fascinating little explorer called Micronova into one of the moon's permanently shadowed craters. This hopping robot will deploy from Intuitive Machines' IM-2 lunar lander, launching aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9, to explore the pitch-black recesses near the lunar south pole, where scientists believe valuable ice deposits might be hiding. What makes Micronova special is its mobility strategy. Instead of wheels, it will use a series of powerful jumps to navigate the rugged lunar terrain. This approach allows it to cover more ground and access locations that traditional rovers would find impossible to reach. The water ice these missions seek could be crucial for future lunar exploration, providing potential resources for drinking water, oxygen, and even rocket fuel, essential elements for establishing a sustainable human presence on the moon. The Artemis program continues to make progress at Kennedy Space Center with the Space Launch System, SLS for Artemis II, taking shape inside NASA's Vehicle Assembly Building. Recent footage captured by photographer John Winkop shows the massive rocket coming together piece by piece. The twin solid rocket boosters are fully stacked, the core stage is positioned for integration, and the nose cone was installed earlier this month. Next comes the interim cryogenic propulsion stage, and finally the Orion spacecraft. Artemis II will be the program's first crewed mission, sending astronauts on a lunar free return trajectory farther than any human has traveled since the Apollo era. The crew will test Orion's systems in deep space, validate the SLS rocket with humans on board, and lay the groundwork for future lunar landings. Closer to Earth orbit, Firefly Aerospace is preparing for their next launch. Alpha-6, carrying Lockheed Martin's LM-400 satellite. This mid-sized satellite platform represents the future of flexible space assets, designed for easy reconfiguration across military, commercial, in scientific missions. Its modular architecture allows for rapid production and deployment, while onboard AI processing enables real-time data analysis in orbit. Crucial for applications like battlefield awareness, disaster response, and climate monitoring. With the Alpha rocket already vertical on the pad, launch appears imminent, though no official date has been announced. This mission follows Firefly's recent success with their lunar vehicle which provided stunning images of Earth and the Moon from space. All these developments, from SpaceX's rapid Starship iterations to Australia's first orbital rocket and NASA's lunar ambitions, highlight the accelerating pace of space exploration. We're witnessing a renaissance in humanity's quest to understand and explore the cosmos, with each mission building upon the last, each failure informing the next success. On the topic of Flight 8, the unexpected delay gives SpaceX engineers crucial time to resolve any remaining issues with the hot staging ring and other systems. This attention to detail reflects the company's commitment to getting things right, even if it means a slight schedule adjustment. The flight path will mirror Flight 7's trajectory, with the booster executing its dramatic return to Starbase, while Ship 34 continues eastward for its splashdown in the Indian Ocean. SpaceX has positioned remote camera buoys in the splashdown zone. A lesson learned from Flight 7, where the lack of clear imagery left many questions unanswered. This time, we should get spectacular views of Ship 34's final moments as it completes its mission, providing engineers with visual data to complement the telemetry readings. As we count down to March 3rd, we're witnessing history unfold in real time. SpaceX's journey with Starship embodies the essence of innovation learn, adapt, improve, repeat. From Flight 7's mixed success to Flight 8's enhanced design, 
and beyond to Flight 9's ambitious catch attempt, each mission pushes the boundaries of what's possible. This isn't just about rockets, it's about humanity's relentless drive to explore the unknown. Whether it's SpaceX perfecting Starship, Australia launching its first orbital rocket, or scientists detecting winds on distant worlds, we're living in the golden age of space exploration. If you're as excited as I am about what's coming next, hit that like button right now. It truly helps this channel reach more space enthusiasts like you. Drop your predictions for Flight 8 in the comments below. Will we see a successful booster catch and ship splash down this time? Your engagement fuels this community. Check out our exclusive Raptor design and Starship Block 2 merch in the store. Link in the description. And don't forget our print store at shop.whataboutit.space where you can grab stunning images for your wall with a significant portion going directly to our incredible photographers. Subscribe to Elon Musk 24 hours if you haven't already. We're just getting started with our coverage of humanity's greatest adventure. And if you want to dive deeper into SpaceX's revolutionary Raptor 3 engine, watch our dedicated video next. Thank you for exploring the cosmos with us. See you for our live coverage of Flight 8.